Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Hello, sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. It's really funny as I was listening to the intro music, even though this intro music is less than a year old, it dawned on me the first radio show that I did, and I remember just about peeing my pants with fear as the music started to play, and I thought, "Uh uh-oh, I can't turn back now. It was pretty frightening. And today I thought, wow, what a difference. I'm just like hanging out here, like I'm talking to my buddies, and you guys are my buddies. And thank you so much for listening. And I also want to thank all of you guys who write comments uh, on YouTube and send comments in some of the different uh, places where this radio show is podcast. And for those of you listening on live streaming, you rock because every listen counts to me. And, you know, I am so, so grateful for everybody who listens to every single one of my episodes and to every single one of you who also, you know, like actually write into me and go, wow, that episode knocked my socks off. I have I have a few of you that are uh, really sweet and you have like um, listened to every single one of my episodes ever and I get feedback all the time and that's just like the best. Keeps me going. And then I have I have some of you who are really really cute and you have these particular kind of shows that you like. And some of them are like um, – there's a few people who are really into all my spanking episodes and anything BDSM related. And I love that. I love that they've, that there's something for everyone uh, on here for sure. And today is a little different, but it is going to involve some sex in a way as well. So for those of you who were like clicking on this topic, um, clicking on this link and you went, mm, that seems like a strange topic. It's not you. It's me. What on earth is that about? And how did you even use an I actually when I wrote this title I wondered what on earth will people type into a search engine to actually find this? And then I thought and I didn't check this, but I might do this during break. I was actually curious about how many people type that into Google to see what does that actually mean? What does it mean when somebody says that to you? Well, we're gonna dive into that tonight. And Before we do, I'd like to let you know about lots of stuff that's going on in my universe and different ways that you can connect with me and different ways that you can um, also have not just like sessions, but even groups and classes and all kinds of things that you can tap into and choose that will have you have even more. So one of my uh, favorite creations that I created is this thing that I call transmissions and transmutations. It's a little different than the pleasure zone. However, I've been noticing that there are several people on there who are really intrigued and interested in busting open their sex lives. So I've had quite a few people who send me personal questions about relationships and about sex and about sex alchemy and about creating your life with your sexual energy. So, It's kind of a surprise that, you know, a lot of things I offer can actually lead into this whole topic of pleasure, even if they weren't set up that way to begin with, but they can lead that way. So the fun thing is, is if you would like some one-on-one quickie coaching sessions, which is more like me tapping into you and sending you quickie notes once a week, they're about five minutes of tips and tools, and you can send me all kinds of things that you'd like to be worked on, and I send you back information, tools, suggestions, all that sort of stuff. You can 
uh, find that, you can actually find the transmissions and transmutations. There will be a link on my website. Um, so today is February 3rd. There will be a link on the website by February 4th on my melitzajelinek.com website. You can just click on the link and join my transmissions and transmutations where you can get a weekly audio recording in about five minutes that will tap you into all kinds of things to create the life you desire. And the coolest thing about it is you can jump into that series and jump out of it at your whim and desire. So you are not in any way obligated to stay for life or anything like that. And uh, also with that, there's once a month, there is a group call. And it's always interesting to see what comes up in the group call because everybody has different requests. So you're welcome to be part of that as well. So now I got a little bit of the housekeeping uh, taken care of. I'm also developing my next sexual magicism class. So I would love to hear from all of you who are really intrigued and interested in what the heck is sexual magicism. There is a commercial that we'll be playing later that you can listen to find out a little bit more about what sexual magicism is. And I will randomly be describing it on some of the shows as well. And I invite you to, to uh, not only like listen to the commercial, but also send me questions. Ask me questions about stuff if you're curious and want to know what is that. By all means, drop me a line. You can drop me a line through my website for sure. You can also find me on different social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram are some of the main ones that I receive messages through. So you can IM me or you can Facebook Messenger me and I will connect with you. Please let me know why you're writing to me. That's always helpful too because I do get a lot of messages and I write back to the people who let me know that they listen to my show, that they liked certain things, or that, and then I'll write back to you. But if you give me none of that, I will give you nothing back. Okay? That's my dealio with you guys. So, it's not you, it's me! You know, I actually had a few people say that to me in my life, and... One of them, uh, the one I remember the most, I'm having like this uh moment today, so excuse me, you can probably take this challenge of listen to my show and see how many times I say uh in it, it's probably a lot, <laughs> just for today. This is all really, truly off the top of my head, out of my butt and out of all the other places and pores I can consider having things pour out of me. That's what's showing up tonight. And... So what I was going to tell you was this story from when I was, I think I was 17 or 18, and I dated this fellow who was going to a rather posh Canadian school. He he went to this school called Upper Canada College, which is very posh, and I was very not posh. I was going to a regular, not a private school, so his was a very private school, and mine was very not. Mine was public, and there was definitely a distinction to him in class and quality of person. Uh, According to him, it was that he couldn't be with somebody who was poor. So for him, it was, it's not you. It's not you. It's that you're poor, but it's me. I just can't be with somebody that's as poor as you. Though, you know, we, we probably weren't really poor because we always had food and we always had a roof over our heads. So it's not like we were poor, but we definitely weren't upper crust going to private school. So it's one of the first times I remembered having somebody make me feel, and not that anybody can make you feel anything, but I'm talking about my 17-year-old self felt like this person made me feel less than. And there's something about that sentence of, it's not you, it's me. Even though the person's trying to make you feel, I think, they're trying to make you feel okay about a situation or like it's not your fault, it really feels like it is. So I don't know about you guys out there, but if you've ever heard somebody say that to you, I would love to hear your reactions 
And if you've ever said it to somebody, I'd love to hear what your justifications behind that were. Like, you know, I had nothing else to say, so I had to break up with them by saying, it's not you, it's me. And then even some people have the audacity to elaborate on this with something even more, I guess it would be more uh, open. It's just like this open-ended uh, comment. It's not you, it's me. I've changed. <laughs> so uh, there's a comment in the chat room. Oh, my God. I remember the dude did because he wanted to have a child. Oh, it's not you, it's me. I, I want to have a kid, so we have to break up. I actually do remember that with the person that said the comment in the chat room. I actually remember, uh, unless there was two of them in your life, I remember one saying that to you. So <laughs> that is funny. Absolutely mental. Yes. You know, having somebody break up with you over when you're like, say, for example, on live radio or doing a live video or teaching a class or you're with a really intense client and somebody sends you a text and just tells you that it's not you, it's me, you know, really could get under your skin to where you just want to tear them apart. Just saying, even for those of us who are pretty resolved in our issues or think we are anyway, but working on our crap for lifetimes and lifetimes still, those things can get under your skin and just make you cringe. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty funny. So I'm really looking at all the times that, you know, even if it's true for you and you're thinking it's actually not you, it's me, what are some other ways that we can share with the person what's going on so that we're not giving this crazy sentence out all over the place and creating unkindness and havoc and it's it's actually like create separation in my mind as well. It's just such a weird thing to say. The funniest thing is, is I was thinking about it from my body's perspective. This show originally, I was looking at how do I describe a scenario where when when as you get older and as your body changes, that it actually is you. Your body, it's your body that is having different changes. So when when that is the case, how do you have a conversation when it truly is you and not them? When it truly is and you really don't want to have to say, it's not you, it's me, because that sentence is ridiculous. So opening the lines of communication so that you can un understand each other and where each other is at you might be surprised. And if you really want to break up with somebody, then it's not you, it's me sucks. I'm just saying that's like the shittiest thing you could probably, you're probably better off just saying, you know what, I'm an idiot and I did this and this and this, or I'm an idiot and I don't love people or I have an incapacity to actually be in a relationship like some truth would be good. Um, when it really is you, though, and you've got something going on, then let your partner know there's something going on with me. I don't have the answers right now. I'm trying to figure this out. And when I know something about this, I'll let you know. But sometimes it really is just it is you and it's not them. And sometimes you need the space to just get through the shit in your head or in your body. So I know that, um, like I would say, probably most of you listeners out there have at some point, especially if you clicked on this, probably had the experience of somebody saying, it's not you, it's me, you know. So I'd like you to just sit there and ponder if you've ever passed that sentence over or if you've ever received it, how did it make you feel? How did it make you feel to have to think that you had to deliver that sentence? And what are some other things that you could have said that might have been equally as true, a little kinder, a little more information, a little less vague, like I changed, you know, give some details. 
people, give some information, people. And if you don't have any, go look at yourself. All right. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yanic. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815-880-TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Or send your questions or comments via email to info at MilicaJelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone, where we are diving into that sentence that is just so unnerving. You know, the sentence of, it's not you, it's me. And like, how many times have we not only heard it or had people give the gesture of it? I know that this goes on in grade school all the time, and um, my friend is in the chat room right now mentioning that it reminds her of when she was an eight-year-old. Because, you know, little girls especially, they have this thing, well, it's not you, it's me. I don't really want to be friends with you anymore, but it's like, it's it's not about you, it's about me. And really, as a kid, you hear something like that, and you're thinking like, what's wrong with me? So I want everybody who, like, is triggered by that sentence, because I don't know what it is that that sentence just, there isn't a lot of pleasure in that sentence for me. And sometimes on the pleasure zone, we go to the places where there is no pleasure for me, and maybe you guys can relate. And we go to those places where there's, like, no pleasure, and we change them up, and we see what else is true, and we move You know, we move ourselves into a different space with stuff. So that's the plan. So that when I hear that sentence in my head, it's not it's not me, it's not you, it's me, it's not you, it's me. Doesn't it just make your fists like curl? Do you just want to punch something? Yep, I understand. If you're all like even agitated by me saying it, I totally get it. So all the energy that's bringing up, that's a lot of energy. And these things that trigger us like that, they have they hold so much energy. And when we bring them from the unconscious to the conscious, we can deal with them. But when we're holding on to them, we start to actually run scenarios in our head where we start to think that people will say this stuff to us. Oh, someone's just going to tell me it's not... It's not me. It's it's not you. It's me. Oh my God. There's and we start creating these like separation scenarios in our heads. Why? Because we're crazy creative. Just 
we're crazy and creative, and we're crazy creative. So if you're going to be, you know, sitting around with this, it's not me, it's you. It's not, I keep on saying it that way, am I not? Because what if that's actually the truth of it? It's not me, it's you. So let's go to the truth of it's not me, it's you. Uh, Maybe there are things about the person you just don't like. Maybe you just didn't have the cojones to bring them up before, and now you're like piled down with all of this crap that you can't even get yourself out of, so you have to walk away. Guess what the magic of the universe will do? The magic of the universe will bring back to you the people who you think it's not you, it's me. They'll bring those people back and back and back, same kind of personality, until you get that the truth of it is, it's not me, it's you, that you're actually blaming people for their behavior and that you actually don't like certain things about them. But guess what? That stuff's a mirror to you. So in fact, it really is you, but you haven't really looked at it because it's all unconscious. So it's time to get a little conscious. It's time to little get a little bit more aware of the kind of crap we perpetrate with these stupid sentences. What can we actually do that would be more truthful? You know, I think one of the things that I am a big fan of is getting really clear on what's going on. I'm a really big fan of that. So there are, you know, people always talk about comparative lists and comparative lists can be great. And they can also sometimes be full of crap. So a comparative list is great when you're willing to be very vulnerable with yourself and very real. And comparative lists can also help you become very clear on what you would like. But again, you have to be honest with yourself. I've seen people make comparative lists. I've seen them and I giggle because some of them are people I've known for a very long time. And they've created these comparative lists. What I would like in a relationship, what I wouldn't like. And, you know, there was one day I was actually coaching someone and they were telling me this beautiful list they had of this ideal partner that they were looking to have. And I said to them, like, the truth is that you have, like, just read a lot of self-help books and you're picking out all the so-called perfect qualities of a person. And in reality, let's just check how true is it that you want a person that's kind, that's gentle, that does this, that does that, that, you know, all these like so-called perfectly very feminine qualities. Um, And my friend is heterosexual as far as I'm aware of and slash client. And, Um, It's funny because the truth of her list, when we finally got down to it, was the truth of her list was she loves makeup sex. And so when we finally got down to it, it's that she actually, like, wants to fight with people in order to have great, as she refers to it, passionate sex. So in that case, for her, it's not you, it's me is a really great way to create a fight in order to go out and get yourself some wild and raucous sex. And there are so many ways that that you got to look at, you know, what is truly real for you. And in those, those moments, when you get this clarity with these comparative lists, uh, for you, it's like the qualities I like about me, the qualities I don't like about me. That's one way to go through it. The qualities I like about others and the qualities I don't like in others. And then there are some times where you have this third column of things that you're not sure about because you don't have enough experience in. So you can always have the unknown column as well. Not really sure about this. And you can start to get clear on before doing that. it's not you, it's me, it will help you define why it's not working for you. If, in fact, it's not working for you, because the reality is is it might totally be working for you the way that my friend, my friend client 
loves fighting and having makeup sex. Uh, she wasn't willing to hear that, ended up getting divorced and gets herself into relationships where she has a lot of makeup sex. So it's interesting. It's interesting because now I'm getting snotty. Anyway, just letting it all go. So when you get that list and you start to look at if you know, you start to look at uh, different things like maybe on your list there are things that you, you know, you really like about another person. Maybe they're kind, maybe they're funny, maybe they're generous, maybe maybe they've got like 20 things on the list of characteristics that you would like. And maybe there's like three things on the list of characteristics you don't like. And maybe there is still a lot more to explore on characteristics that you haven't really been around a lot you don't have enough information on. So when you start to know what it is, then instead of saying to them, it's not you, it's me, you can literally go to the list and go, you know, there's this thing that I can't actually be around, which is it's my no-go part of my list. It's my deal breaker. My deal breaker is infidelity or something. So if your deal breaker is infidelity and the person that you're with is you know, cheated on you, that's a pretty big deal breaker. Now, some some people are able to move through that and some people aren't. So when it comes down to it, breaking up going, it's not you, it's me, is not really totally true. It is you, but it's your perspective on certain things. So if you let them know, this is my, you know, this is my what I hold true, and this is my perspective on these things, you know, this is why I can't be with you. Now, that is fair. That is fair to you because now you know what's true for you and you've honored you. And it's fair to them because you've given them more information than just the vague, it's not you, it's me, uh, I've changed. So, please definitely consider the different ways that you can change this up and be way more clear with your information rather than vague. It's not you, it's me. Super vague. The other sentence of, I'm not a fan of infidelity and you cheated on me. I'm not really a fan of that. So can't really, you know, can't really deal with this. And if you can't really deal with it, then you need to know that it's time to either walk away or to negotiate with your partner if you want to make it work. If you really, really want to make it work, there are ways you can make it work. Um, that's a whole other show. but And it's not really about making it work so much, but I know that's what people use as terminology, so that's what I'm going to call it, making it work. But it's not about that. So, so between the getting really clear on what it is that you absolutely require and what it is you absolutely don't require and the things you don't have enough information on and you would just like more information on, um, make those lists so that you can be very honoring of you and you can be very honoring of the other person even in the breakup. You can be honoring of them and you by giving them clarity and information that, you know what, I think everybody would like to have you know if somebody was breaking up with me I would want to have the details of what it was that I did Um, and I had one boyfriend who did that he gave me a whole gamut of information only upon us breaking up but for four years of dating he gave me no information whatsoever so he bottled it up for four freaking years and then it came out like a tsunami so Please don't bottle it up for four years. Definitely, communication is key for your relationship to work to begin with. So you don't even have to get down to this stupid, and I'm calling it stupid because it's a super unconscious comment to say it's not you, it's me. It's totally unconscious because you don't give them enough information. So what information can you share with people that would be honoring of you, honoring of them, even you know, 
some level you probably like them somewhat. So try and be kind. Just try it. Just try it on. It's like trying on new underwear. It might be comfortable, might not be, but you get to try it on and check it out. We are going to be heading off to our next commercial break. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melissa Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815-880-TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Or send your questions or comments via email to info at MilicaJelenich.com. Now, back to the program. So, welcome back, everybody. Sweet Pleasure Seekers, I'm so grateful for all of you being here and hanging out. And one of the uh, things that, you know, since we're on the pleasure zone, I'm definitely going to talk about the sex end of it's not you, it's me. Now, there's a few scenarios where this sort of thing comes up. Men with erectile dysfunction. It's not you, it's me. And and a lot of times, there is an awful lot of truth to that. And though on the receiving end, if your partner is not having an erection, it can feel like it's your fault, like you're not sexy enough, like you're not enough in general. And if that's what's going on, then maybe you require some, like, ego stroking in other ways, maybe kind words, or maybe gifts, or maybe time spent together. You know, looking at your languages of love, uh, other than maybe the sex part of it. So, what can you, you know, when your partner says, for example, if your partner is having erectile dysfunction, does it's not you, it's me, you know, as a partner, what is something that you could say that will probably allow your partner to feel a little more at ease to telling you more about what's going on or to ease it for yourself so that you can let your partner know there are other ways to show you that they love you. So oftentimes we have to educate our partners. And so if your partner is like, I'm really sorry, it's not you, it's me, and there's erectile dysfunction going on, then say to them, you know what, honey, whatever it is that works for you, you know what, what I really like is to be cuddled, what I would really like is to be fingered or stroked, or what I'd really like is a hand job, or what I'd really like is you to, you know, do some anal play or like play with my nipples till I scream. There are so many other things when it really does come down to a physical 
thing going on where, say, for example, erectile dysfunction, that that you can invite into your relationship and your sex life to have it just be so much more fun and to ease the conscience of both partners. Now, there are circumstances, though, where, like with erectile dysfunction, that you really do want to get some things checked out medically. There can be stressors involved. There can be heart uh, conditions involved as well. So, and a variety of other things. There could be damage to the erectile tissue. There could be damage in general. There could have been an accident. There could be so many different factors going on. A lot of times uh, for somebody who's got not had an accident or something that's generally like heart or nerve related uh, conditions. Again, I'm not talking from a medical, uh, I'm not a medical doctor. So I definitely encourage you to go to your doctor. Don't self-diagnose, get it checked out. Maybe it's nothing, but I, I personally, if I was a man and I was having erectile dysfunction, I would get my heart checked. That's what I know for me. And there's generally like conditions that are going on or even if they're on heart medication that can create that as well. There's There are different medications that affect erections as well. So it's not you, it's me. It's probably true for certain circumstances when it comes to, you know, and actually having sex or being able to, like we're talking about copulating, so actually having an erection. So for men. And then for women, the it's not you, it's me. There's a lot of changes that can be going on for women, just like men, even like men going through andropause and different things that will affect erection or pleasure or even their pleasure zones will change too. So with women too, it's, you know, can be very hormonal. If you think about your own body, and you think about when you were like five, and you think about when you were 25, and you think about when you're 45, I say 45, because I'm going to be 45 soon, so I'm referring to that. And then, you know, 65 or 55 or whatever, every few years, I'd say, probably every five to ten years, there is kind of a shift that goes on, and there may be preferences that your body begins to like or change or desire different things. So... It's not to assume that sex will always be the same with your partner. That, you know, if you've been with somebody for 10 years, it doesn't mean the sex that you had with them 10 years ago is going to be the same sex that you have with them today. That's probably not going to be the case at all. First of all, if you met your partner when you were like, for example, a teenager, and now you're in your 20s, you may have become far more exploratory. You might have opened your world to more things. You may have educated each other on what you really enjoy. You might have had more confidence in the bedroom uh, or wherever you're having sex. And you might have had more confidence in your skills as well, not just the sex part, but other skills like oral sex or touch of any kind. So your skills will change. And then the receiving end, your partner who's receiving, and from the woman's perspective, their body changes as well. So as hormones change, your body's reaction changes. Stress levels have an effect on women's libido as well. Anything to do with family or, you know, women are nurturers. So if they've been looking after a lot of people or things or businesses, that can have an impact on libido as well. So again, for them, it's not you, it's me. It can be very true, but again, it's very vague. So you've got to be more specific with your partner so that you can actually find a resolution. <coughs> and some, excuse my coughing, it's not you guys, it's me. <laughs> so there is, yeah, so you can find a resolution. Like, for example, for uh, for my body has changed a lot in the last, I would say, 20 years. 20 years ago, when I think about when I was 25, I was I had actually just gone through some violence with my body. So I was having a very strange time trying to heal things and 
uh, was really like hoping I was healing faster than I was in terms of emotionally. And I wasn't there, but I was like forcing my body to be okay with stuff that I wasn't really okay with. And on some level, I feel like my partner was aware of that, um, but not maybe at the same time. We were kind of disconnected. We weren't really, you know, doing anything energetically uh, regarding sex, even though I'd been doing energy work for for several years at that point. Uh, my partner was not so interested in playing that way. So I, you know, I think when I look back to even when I was 20 or 22, and what I liked and didn't like, there was a lot of things I did not like at all. I had a lot of aversion to being touched in different places. Wow, this is really breaking up a lot of old crap for me. This is interesting. I had like no congestion until I, my body was feeling really good. I had no congestion until I started talking about this. Fascinating. So, yeah, what is that? It's fascinating. And now my voice is changing. Woo! So I think when when we look at that, and I'm talking about bodies changing, isn't that really funny? That when I started at like eight o'clock, there was there wasn't a lot of this like snot happening. There wasn't a lot of congestion happening. And then within 40 minutes, my body is like talking about things. Things are changing and releasing. It's also having an effect on different parts of my body, just remembering the energies of it's not you, it's me, um, being projected at me or even said to me where my body recoiled and maybe held on to a lot of self-judgment and criticism like what's wrong with me. Even though they said it's not you, it's me, it feels so very opposite, doesn't it? And so I would hold on to that and go what's wrong with me? Why am I so unattractive or why does this person hate me or why isn't this working? A lot of those crazy questions that make you feel very um, like self-loathing. So if you've been going through a lot of that self-loathing and uh, self-deprecation you know, kind of stuff and you'd like to be able to get out of that, would you? You know, would it be fun for you to get some coaching on that? Because that's actually something that I do. And I'm essentially kind of coaching myself through this uh, snot ball right now, too. So we'll see how this shifts. Uh, I'm quite curious to see if it shifts when the show is over. I think it will. That's pretty cool to me. I totally have a snot ball of brilliance going on right now. (laughs) So, So talking about bodies changing and how quickly they can change... It can literally be like one day you feel really good about having like anal penetration and then like two days later you're like, "Uh uh-uh. And what I encourage you to do is honor you 100% all the time, all the, all the time. And when, what that means is that you are having communication with your body all the time. So... You know, getting into the sack and starting to, have, you know, maybe have sex. Maybe there's no foreplay. Maybe it's just straight to the sex. So if that's the case and your body's like, uh, uh-uh, wait, that's not happening. Communication. Right there is where the communication is required. You could, you know, you could play some games with your husband or partner or, uh, wife or not multiple lovers, whatever you've got going on, you know, you could mess with them if you like and be mean if you want and just be like, no, not interested. Get away from me. You could do that. I've heard a lot of reports about people who do the shrugging people off and then it goes for a year or two years or five years where then all of a sudden there's no love happening. So there's no loving happening. So please don't shrug your partner off. If your partner's trying to communicate with you and you genuinely care about them, please listen. That's for men and for women. You know, we tend to say that men don't listen. But the truth is, is there are a lot of women who don't listen too. So communication and then actually listening. And if that means that you have to have your partner reiterate what you said, then that's the game you're going to play. 
and which is better than the game of I reject you, I push you away, and I'm going to create havoc because you deserve to be punished, you bum. So we loved, you know, we have these tendencies. We like to punish people for whatever, not knowing exactly what we want 24-7. Um, I was queen punisher. I should have actually had a crown in my 20s. I was the queen punisher. And God bless the guy I was going out with. I went out with him for a number of years as well. I'm like a serial monogamist. I have like a lot of time with one person at a time. And the um, the person that I was with at that time uh, really was patient with me and my idiosyncrasies. And a lot of those idiosyncrasies I don't even have anymore. I had like some OCD to the max. And I would just everything he did would drive me mental. And unfortunately, like he took a brunt, it took a lot of brunt of, of like my crap. And so for me, I really needed to look at myself. And that's when I actually started, uh, just after I, I broke up with him, I started therapy. And it wasn't because of him. It was because I knew I was jacked and I knew I was being, re- you know, retaliate, like creating retaliation for nothing. I knew I was creating problems and havoc for nothing. And I didn't really want to continue that. So I did all kinds of therapy in order to try and break my habits so that I could be the person that I actually know I was and am. I want. I just wanted to do this work so that I could show up. And all this other crap was layered on top of me. So in that case... It really wasn't him at all. It really, truly was all of my shit. He was actually a really nice guy. Um, He's really an interesting character. Still have contact with him randomly on Facebook. But for the most part, there have been some pretty decent men in my life that I haven't uh, necessarily been fair to. So in reality, a lot of it was it's, not you, it's me, but that's not really how it came across. So it would just come across as a lot of blame because I made it more about them and not me. And ultimately, take ownership over the shit you've created and the havoc you've created and start to change your behavior, which is even better than making amends um, because it only matters that when you change your behavior and when you actually go to make amends with a person, you can recognize the asshole crap that you did. And you can actually say, I'm aware that I was an asshole and I am so sorry about the way I affected you and your life and what I did. And that was unkind and unfair. And I totally own that. And I am so sorry that if somebody said to me, I would probably go, cool. I get that you get it. But if they're like, yeah, well, you know, well, uh, at the time, it was just like some stuff I was going through and blah, blah, blah. Because I've had those kind of half-assed apologies before, too, from people, and they are crap. So <laughs> the, this show is taking some detours to stories about my life and breakup scenarios, because this is really usually when you hear the sentences, it's not you, it's me, is usually a breakup scenario. But it can also land in the bedroom with erectile dysfunction or even with women if if they're having issues with sexual function as well and really truly comes down to physiological changes going on in the body and being aware of them and sexual preferences as we age. So we're actually going to head to our very last commercial. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. 
Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Milica Jelenic is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.malitzayelenich.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815-880-TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send your questions or comments via email to info at milicajelanich.com Now, back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. I wanted to just give you guys a little bit of um, tools or tips on some things that you can do to start to shift some of this energy for you. So, when it comes down to the it's not you, it's me, and you're feeling that, for example, in your body and with sex, I really want you to get in communication with your body. Just like I'm asking you at the first half of the show, if it really, if you really feel like it's not you, it's me, when it comes to relationships, to look at you and what's going on with you, to look at your partner and see if there's something that they've said or done or been that you just know in your heart of hearts that you have no room um, for in your life, like it is a deal breaker for you. And there are just some things that are deal breakers and that's okay. So if there's a deal breaker and you just know that that's never going to change, then just be aware of that. Uh, if you are aware that there is room for improvement and that you feel like there is room for change, start with communication. Get really clear on the things that you would like in your partner, things that you definitely don't want in your partner and things that you're willing to explore and that doesn't mean for them to change into your list it's just for you to be clear on what works for you and to also look at yourself and like what about your personality are you loving and what are some things that you're not loving so much and is there room for you to change some of the parts of you that you're not loving so much like I mentioned there were parts of me when I was in my early 20s that I really didn't like. I really didn't like being a bitch, but it was like an automatic reaction and like a retaliation and some desire to punish men big time. And every once in a while the desire to punish still comes in. There's so many more fun ways to play with that now. So I invite you to check out other ways to play with punishment. Um, but sometimes punishment can be playful and sometimes punishment is like the silent treatment. It just depends on what works for you that day. But just know and be conscious of what you're choosing and doing and being and be aware enough to change it so that you don't have to hold crap in your body and have a snot ball running out in the middle of your show. So that's what I'm doing. I'm becoming more conscious right now. And when it comes to sex, ask your body. Your body is so wise Ask your body, if it's not you, it's me, body, like, what's going on? Show me. Do I need to see a doctor? Do I need to do this? What would you like to do? What would you? What kind of touch would you like? What kind of exploration would you like? And there are so many shows in the archives of The Pleasure Zone that you can check out that will invite you to more consciousness with your body and having way more fun with sex and your body and sexualness and sexy energy and all the good stuff. Stay tuned in and turned on till next week. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Jelenic. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.